Hi, this is Midlands Metalheads Radio here at uh, the Steelhouse Festival 2018. I'm very privileged to say that we are in the company of Mr. Dan Reed. Good to see you. How are you? Very good. Last time we spoke uh, was at the um, Globe in Cardiff. Oh yeah, that was when about you did, two years ago. That's yeah. right, when you yeah. were with Vega. Yeah, now, great band. You have mentioned over the years that you do shows where you ask people in the audience to shout out yes. titles of songs. Yeah. We're not going to get that today, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. We only have an hour, I think. An hour mm. set tonight, so we don't have a lot of room to play with that. But when we do our own tour, like we're doing in November, we, have, we usually play about two hours, yeah. and then we can kind of just mess around. Because a lot of times when we get requests, we haven't played that song for 25 years. Mm -hmm. So we have to sit and kind of learn it in front of the audience, and I think it's kind of fun for them to see that. Yeah. But I don't want to do stuff like that here only have an hour. But Back in the day in Oregon when we all got together, yeah. um, the success that you had, say, the uh, late to early 90s with mm. uh, Slam and stuff like that, mm -hmm. um, did it sort of push you in one direction with the music as such because there was a lot happening with grunge and, and different types of music? I would say that The Heat, our third album, was definitely influenced by that. Um, the first and second album not, we were kind of um, alone in our own field where we were mixing these different styles, but once grunge had hit in 90, I think in 1990, um, uh, we were in the middle of writing for The Heat album. And I, I remember just going, man, it'd be okay to get a little darker. You know, I was thinking that for the mm -hmm. third album. And then I knew a lot of these guys from uh, Mother Love Bone, which became Pearl Jam. Yeah. Um, Lane Staley and Allison Chains was a friend. Um, so there was uh, a reason to kind of follow that too, because I, I, I liked that music. I thought they were doing a really cool thing. I didn't know it was going to change the world so much, yeah. the music world, but... So I think there's probably three or four songs on the heat that were directly influenced by let's get a little darker and heavier and you know that kind of thing. So um, I wouldn't say we were pushed to do it, but I pushed myself to do it a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Well, when the band split, um, would you say you sort of took a different direction then in your life? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I stayed home. I wasn't touring on the road at all. Um, I started taking acting classes, um, started uh, going to uh, filmmaking school. Uh, screenplay writing classes and I really I really kind of wanted to devote my creative energy toward putting something on screen because I started doing theater plays mm -hmm. and I really enjoyed the process of taking other people's writing as opposed to my writing um, to the stage and trying to give it some kind of life or character and so then I decided oh, maybe it'd be fun to write a film so I wrote like four or five screenplays and then uh, some folks came in and supported one of them and we produced a feature film yeah. and then we were about to do a second feature film and I got an offer to uh, buy the old nightclub that we got our record deal in back in the day called Key Largo and that became a whole another five-year you know um, project so it went from theater to filmmaking to club owner <laughs> and that was like a 10-year period there that just uh, kept me home I was able to spend a lot of time with my parents I was able to have a dog, I have a garden, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I really enjoyed that time. Did the nightclub take you to a, a darker place? Yeah, at for the sure. Time? Yeah. yeah, but the first couple years of the club was just fun. It was a lot of uh, experimenting, mixing electronic acts with rock acts, and I liked seeing that cross pollinization of uh, long-haired rockers coming, you know, coming to the club at ten o'clock leaving at midnight and all the ravers were coming in at midnight right, to go yeah. up until 4 a.m. Yeah. And sometimes you'd see rockers hanging out till 4 a.m. enjoying the music mm -hmm. and sometimes you'd see the raver folks coming a little early to check out the bands yeah. and that was always cool. And then we created this band called uh, Dahlia which was uh, a wonderful woman singer named Jennifer Folker and this really inventive uh, keyboardist uh, composer named Keith Schreiner. Um, put them together on stage every Tuesday night and they just would make stuff up live and pretty soon we'd have 200 people 300 people and then it became 400 people every Tuesday night and so th those kind of creations were a lot of fun for myself um, so the first two years was just magic then this third year I started getting diving into drinking too much uh, and then I started doing cocaine so I could stay sober while I was drunk and that would start on the weekends and it became Thursday Friday Saturday uh, as any addiction does and by the end of the third year, I was a mess pretty much mentally. I was still showing up, I was still booking, still working, um, but I was internally um, eroding. So, yeah, it wasn't until I got news that my father got sick that it kind of straightened me up. Yeah. So. 
and then he went off to India. Yeah, I did, <clears> after <throat> a year. Was that an, an enlightening experience, so to speak? Yeah, I mean, I went there in 1992 to interview the Dalai Lama for a magazine called Spin, a music magazine. Mm -hmm. And I remember just having such fond memories of the attitude of the Tibetan people that were living up in the mountains there. They seemed to take everything in stride, and they had no, nothing that you could say that we in the West, you know, hold so dear, whether it's video games and electricity and things, you yeah. know, owning things. They had very little, you know, but they seemed to smile more and be happier than anybody I knew that had money. Um, and I just kind of wanted to know what was their secret? What was that all about? And so I wanted to go back there, and I did uh, a decade later, and got to, got to know these folks. So you were in a monastery? Yeah, the time, I spent yeah. 11, 11 months up there. Yeah. <laughs> it was fantastic. And that I think that thing is, uh, you know, the room is about half the size, the room that I slept in. Mm -hmm. um, little mattress on the floor, little uh, table with a candle on it, no electricity. And it's very humbling if you can live that way month after month and focus on uh, gratitude, um, you know, cultivating that inside of yourself. Uh, you can say compassion as opposed to love caring about uh, people and, and animals and the planet more than you normally do and focusing on that every day in meditations and a lot of it teaches you patience uh, it teaches you to let go of uh, negative energies whether it's greed or uh, uh, remorse guilt a lot of things that we carry with us on our, our spiritual back so I learned a lot about letting that stuff go um, and at the same time, even to this day, I still struggle with that. I still make mistakes. I'm not like living in some blissful world all the time, but at least I can f try to find balance, try to apologize to people when I've wronged them. Mm -hmm. um, back in the past, you would just kind of be a, you know, yeah. on go and yeah. just plow so through people. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's, it helped a lot, I think. Excellent. How did you get the band back together again then for, for the album in <laughs> 2016? Oh, for the, for the record, yeah, that was pretty easy because we were already playing shows and touring and we all just looked at each other one day and we're like, you know what, we're really enjoying playing again and there's no point in us just going out and playing all the old songs only, so do, you wanna, do we want to write a record together? Mm -hmm. And usually in the past I was much more controlling, I needed to write like 90% of the stuff, that's the way I looked at it, and that's why it was the Dan Reed Network and all yeah, this stuff. Yeah. But with this last album, um, Brian James was sending me some materials. Um, Melvin and Rob are become, I mean, Rob's an amazing writer and Melvin's starting to write his own stuff, his own uh, solo music, the bass player. And so we just started, let's have a party, just send stuff over and let's start writing together more. Mm -hmm. um, I wish I would have been more open-minded back in the day, but you learn as yeah, you go right. along. Yeah, it's yeah. a good album, actually. Oh, thank Stuff you. like Divided. I mean, yeah, thank um, you. I do the breakfast show on the station with Earth uh, Metalhead, yeah. and there's a call for a lot of Dan Reed network uh, material. Wow, that's great to yeah. hear. Yeah, still now, even the old stuff, you know, like uh, Tiger in a Dress. Yeah, we're playing that today. Go, you are, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> um, is there a new album in the pipeline, would you yeah, say? Yeah, we got a new record coming out in November. Yeah. Yeah, and then we're touring uh, just the UK. It's called Origins, and the tour is Origins UK, and we're doing like 14 dates with uh, Mason Hill from Glasgow, yeah. and Hollow Star from, I think they're from Birmingham area, yeah, maybe? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Um, supporting, so we have both of those great new bands, and we thought it, you know, we always had bands give us a break and introduce our music to their audience, so we want to do the same thing with our tours, so yeah, that starts uh, November 7th. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. The set you're doing later on, is mm. it going to be a bit of a mixture because the last time I saw you mm. doing Earth, Wind and Fire stuff one minute yeah. and then... We, we'll probably throw some stuff in. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got a couple, maybe a couple new ones in there today. It did work though, I'll be honest yeah. with you. Yeah, yeah, fair point. Thank you, yeah, I think we'll try to screw with people's heads today, <laughs> as usual. Yeah. yeah. Dan, it's been a pleasure. Oh, the pleasure's mine. No, thank you very much oh, indeed for your time. You. Really? Cheers. Midlands Melhead's Radio with Dan Reed at Steelhouse Festival 2018. Where are we again? Let's see if I can remember where I am this time. <laughs>